What's up my stat stars? In this video, we're gonna talk about how to solve binomial distribution and probability questions on the TID4 calculator. So many kids ask me questions about what work do I have to show? What work do I don't have to show? A lot of kids know about binomial PDF and CDF on their calculator, but they have no idea how to properly use them. So let's first remind you what the binomial distribution is. Here we're looking for X successes in N trials with a given probability of success. P. Sorry for the typo there. I know it says if. Now, that's called the binomial distribution because you have to be told two things. N, a given number of trials, and P, the probability of success. Now, here is the formula, and this formula is on the AP Stats formula sheet for calculating the probability of X successes in N trials. This first part right here tells you how many different combinations you could have X successes out of N trials. This is for the probability of those successes because you're going to need X successes. And then all of your other trials must be failures. So if you have X successes and N trials, then N minus X must be how many failures you have. And one minus P is the opposite of success. That's going to be your probability of failure. So that's the form that's quite easy to use. But again, when I'm going to show you this video is you actually don't have to use that formula, but you do have to know how to show it. So here's the example we're going to look at. Shreya is playing a game where the probability she wins any attempt of the game is 60%. The outcome of each game is independent of the others. That's super important for binomial. Let the random variable X be the number of games she wins in 10 attempts. So if she has 10 attempts of the game, she could win 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or all 10 attempts. Any one of those is a possibility. So this is a discrete random variable because I just listed all of the possible outcomes for the random variable. Now, let's ask a question. What is the probability she wins exactly three games? Well, we know three things that we have to know for this problem. First, we have to know the trials, 10, and we have to know the probability of success. Now, it's called the binomial distribution because you only need to know those two things. The failure rate kind of comes for free. If there's a 60% chance of success, there's obviously a 40% chance of failure. So here is me showing my work with the formula. So we first have 10 successes, or excuse me, 10 trials. We're looking for three successes. So we have 0.6, that's our probability of success, raised to the third, because we need three successes. And then we have 0 0.4, that's our failure rate, raised to seven, because 10 minus three is seven. That means the other seven attempts must be failures. So once again, this front part is gonna actually figure out how many different success, how many different ways you could have three successes in 10. Now we could actually use our calculator to figure that out for us. We have 10, we type 10 in first, then we're gonna go math, we're gonna slide all the way over to probability and go down to NCR, that's our choose command or combinations. So we have 10 choose or how many different combinations of 10 can we have three successes? And that's going to get you 120. We would then multiply that by 0.6 to the third and 0.4 to the seventh. But I'm about to show you is that you don't even need to do that. There's a command on your calculator. Hit second vars. I think it's actually faster to go up. But regardless, it's the command binomial PDF. Now, binomial PDF will calculate the exact number of successes that you're looking for. So uh, it's going to ask me for a couple simple questions here. So 10 trials. Probability of success we said was 0.6 and we're looking for exactly three. Now, if you're doing a binomial PDF, whatever number you type in for the X value, that's exactly how many successes it's going to calculate the probability of. So we go and hit paste and enter, and we get 0.0425 as our probability here. 0.0425. So not impossible, a little bit lower probability that this happens. And that should actually make sense because if you think about it, she should win six games. At least that's the expected value in the long run. So to only win three should be a little bit less likely. But again, how you could use PDF. Now this is a multiple choice. You don't have to show any work. Just jump and use the calculator. But if this is an FRQ, you do have to show this work, but you can use the calculator to get your answer. Please keep that in mind. All right, let's do another question. What is the probability she wins less than three games? Okay, less than three games would be two games, one game, or zero games. Now, less than three does not include three. So you gotta be very careful on how we say that because if it said at most three, then we would actually include three. So here's me showing all of my work. The probability that she wins less than three games would be winning two, winning one, or winning zero. Got all of my work shown there using the proper formula, not too, too bad. Now, I could do three binomial PDFs. Do a binomial PDF with two, binomial PDF with one, binomial PDF with zero, and then I would, of course, get my answers, add them together, but there's a faster way to do this on your calculator. 
indicator. And this is exactly what binomial CDF does. So if we go over to binomial CDF, now it's going to ask us the same questions, 10 trials, probability of success is 0.6, but whatever X value you type in, it's going to calculate the probability of those outcomes or anything below. So if I type in a three, it's going to do three, but also two, one, and zero, and combine them all together. That C and CDF stands for cumulative. So it's going to accumulate three, two, one, and zero. But be careful, that's not what I want. I want the probability she wins less than three games. And by definition, less than three is two, one, and zero. So I'm going to type in a two here. That way it's going to calculate exactly what the work was that I showed, two, one, and zero. And I get my answer of 0.01229. So be very careful. Now, if the question was worded a little bit different, it said at most three, then all of a sudden we want to equal three. We'd have to include 10 choose three, 0 0.6 to the third, 0 0.4 to the seventh. And then when we go to that binomial CDF, we would type in three. That way it calculates three, two, one, and zero and adds them all together for me. All right, now let's ask another question. What is the probability she wins at least three games? Now, at least three means three or more. So this is three or four or five or six or seven or eight or nine or all 10 games. So one way I could do this is by doing all of those PDFs, but that'd be a lot of work. I got to show 10 choose three, 10 choose four and so forth, all the way to 10 choose 10. Now, that would be a lot of work to do. I could also do a PDF for each of them to get my total, add them all together, but there's a faster way. There's always two ways to solve these binomial problems. You could do the work for what it asks, or you could do the work for what it doesn't ask. But if you do the work for what it doesn't ask, you have to do one minus that result. So here's my thinking. I want greater than or equal to three. So if I find the probability that it's less than three, which is again, two, one, and zero, and then I do one minus that result. So if I get rid of the things I don't want, I'll be left with that I do want. So again, here's the list of all outcomes, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If I do the work for what I don't want, that's 0, 1, and 2, I then have to subtract that away from 1, and I'll be left with everything that I do want. It's really, really that simple. So here's my work for that. Here's me showing my work for that. So I have 10 choose 2, 10 choose 1, 10 choose 0, and all of the formula worked out there. But then again, I'm going to do 1 minus that all of that result. So now when I go to my calculator, once again, I'm going to do that binomial CDF because the CDF is going to do all of these for me. It's going to calculate it much faster. 10 trials, probability of success is 0.6. And again, if I type in a two, it's going to do two, one, and zero. Now, again, this is what I don't want. That's what I wanted for the previous problem when I wanted less than three, but now I want three or more. So once I get this answer, you can write it down or just on your calculator, you're going to do one minus and then go up and select that value because we're looking for the opposite. There it is, 0.9877. So the probability that she wins three or more games, which is at least three, is 98.77%. So again, just Think about how you're going to utilize CDF. There is no binomial command on your calculator that does the value type in or higher. Wish there was, but there's just not. So what we could do is we got to think if we're asking for a value and then higher, we got to think about getting rid of what we don't want because the CDF could go lower and then we'll get our answer. But we just got to make sure we don't forget to do that one minus. All right, here's another very popular question just because it's a little bit more multi-step. What is the probability that she wins less than the mean? Now, a lot of kids are like, I don't know how to answer this. Well, the first thing I do is figure out what is the mean, because if we know what the mean is, then we can get a better idea of what we're trying to figure out. Now, hopefully you remember the formula for the mean of a binomial distribution, but if you don't, it's on the AP Sets formula sheet. It's a really easy formula. You just take your sample size or the number of trials, 10, multiply by the probability of success, 0.6, and we get six. So the mean would be six. In the long run, she would expect to win six out of 10 games. So if she played 10 games, played 10 games, played 10 games, in the long run, she should expect to win six games. But now the question wants us to find the probability that it's less than six, because the probability wants us to find the the question wants us to find the probability that she wins less than the mean. We figured out that the mean is six. Now we want to do less than six. So once again, think what's less than six, five, four, three, two, one, or zero wins. Now this is exactly what our calculator could speed up for us. Now we could do a binomial PDF for five, four, three, two, one, and zero, add them all together, but that's still going to take too much time, especially when I have this awesome command of binomial CDF. All I got to do is type in 10, 
0.6 for the probability, and then I'm going to type in 5. Be careful. Don't type in 6. If I type in 6, it's going to include 6. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I want the probability that it's less than 6, and I'm sorry, 6 is not less than 6. If the mean was 6.2, well, then 6 would be less than 6.2, but not if the mean is 6. So by me typing in a 5 here, it's going to calculate all values and add them all together that are less than 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And I'm going to get my answer in one big swoop, 0.3669. So pretty nice and simple there to get that answer, 0.3669. And again, the binomial CDF and binomial PDF are awesome ways to get answers quickly. But please, on a FRQ question, if you have to show your work, you got to show your work like I did right here. You could use the calculator to get your answer quickly, but you got to show your work. All right, hopefully that's a quick review video for you can understand how to utilize the binomial distribution, quick review of the binomial distribution, and then how you can use your calculator to get some answers pretty quickly.